Well, I finally have an excuse to make a video again. They've made big changes to the 1v1 format, um, undoing some of the nonsense that they had put into effect earlier, but adding some additional nonsense, which I'm not at all happy about, but uh, it is what it is. So what's changed? I'm going to hit that real fast, then I'm going to run through the deck list, and then I will run through games and hopefully you'll be entertained. So let's start with the banned list. Um, some of the cards that were already banned, so a lot of Power 9 cards were already banned, so we don't need to worry about that. Ancestral, Back to Basics was always banned, Balance banned, Baral still banned, thank goodness. Lotus Braid still banned. I am totally indifferent to this, but that's fine, I guess. Uh, channel banned is definitely important. Derevi banned, I'm, I don't know how I feel about it, but uh, sure. I guess it gets around the commander tax too easily, and that's not it's kind of a broken mechanic, so perhaps that's not good. Uh, Doomsday Band, I don't mind at all. I know it's probably disappointing for some combo players, but there's still plenty of combo cards left, so yeah. Uh, Edgar Markov, I'm not even sure that he needs to be banned in this format, but it's a stupid card, so maybe it's better for the best. And I say stupid in the sense that like it encourages you to play in a stupid way. You just load your deck up with vampires and play them and that's kind of brain dead and this is supposed to be a more interesting format than that i think although i'm sure people ha got to have fun with it for a while i was never a fan edric gone disappointing kind of because you know i like playing edric decks but on the other hand he's kind of a scourge on the format so i think that's okay emrakul's gone which is great because it's just a dumb card again you can make an entire deck around just cheat this into play very easily as we've seen with polymorph uh, it totally breaks the um, command spirit of commander, but it, in in essence, because uh, well, I don't know if it breaks the spirit of commander, but it breaks the games. That's for sure. Uh, and decks decks get super warped around the existence of Emrakul if it's in the format. Um, Arayo has gone, which is fine. This is one of those band as a commander cards that probably could be in a deck and it would be an annoying card to face but not an unstoppable card but as a commander it's way too good because it, you can just proc it on before your opponent gets a turn too often and that's not worth messing around with and since they can't do bend as a commander for whatever reason i guess it's got to go edric incidentally falls in that same category as does edgar markov of course any of those cards could be fine in a deck derevi could be fine in a deck see this is the problem the braids even could be fine in a deck but the problem is uh, well, we're all two. The commander mechanic itself is so good. Having a card on demand whenever you want it in every opening hand that you have makes cards like this too good. Um, where they would normally be okay if they could just ban them as commanders. They'd be great cards when you drew them, and the rest of the time, not so much. Uh, Fast Bond is banned, which is a weird one because I'm not really sure what you can do with fast bond when they also banned da -da -da, strip mine which we'll talk about in a second food chains ban okay combo card fine too good with brush i guess gifts ungiven ban straight up combo card i'm okay hermit druid another gross combo card turn two kills with this card's not too fun you can actually kill on turn one with it it's just ultra dumb uh humility i mean you got to give it haste but honest it's not the most difficult thing in the world to do for example uh, you can, if you can get this into play on turn one, and there's a lot of ways to do that that you can imagine, I'm sure, uh, then you simply play a crypt, or if that play involved a soul ring or a vault, and you run out lightning greaves, equip him. It's just not, it's not a cool card to be in the format. Humility ban, this I'm completely baffled by, except for the fact that they just don't like control. And that's going to be the theme of the new bands. If you notice, they've opened up the tutors so you and the fast mana. So you've got more tutors, more fast mana, less cards to stop degeneracy because control cards, anti-combo cards like Humility, gone. Caracas was always banned, so okay. Uh, I, I honestly think it could be in the format, but whatever, as a sanity check for like reanimator decks and stuff, but they don't want that. They don't want it. I understand how it interacts with commanders, and yet, what are you going to do, bounce my Brea? I mean, there's lots of commanders like that where you bounce the commander. Sure, it's mildly annoying, but on the other hand, it might be beneficial, so not the greatest thing in the world. It also does a great job of slowing down something like the Jace combo decks, the baby Jace, uh, Vryn's Prodigy, and uh, I, I, think, I honestly think this card should have been allowed in the format, but again, 
it's a control it's pretty much best in control a control type card uh, so they're going to ban it library banned of course mind twist banned now very disappointing so combo is much stronger and one of the key tools to destroy combo gone uh moat is only good against certain combo decks i'm not again like i mean if the argument for humility is the commanders what is the argument for moat most of the commanders you can easily build around this for example mono red is running uh, the best mono red deck is Doretti, so it doesn't care about moat at all um all the best decks in the other colors most likely either fly or don't care about the attack phase much I, I, again, I, I don't super understand this, but whatever. Uh, Mox, Mox, Emerald, Jet, Pearl, Ruby, and Sapphire were previously banned. That's fine. Natural Order banned. Yeah, uh, Natural Order and Detrasson's a super feel-bad moment. Um, I'm totally cool with Natural Order being banned. The card's ridiculous. It's basically Green Tinker, and Tinker should be banned. So I'm okay with that one. Also, Druids, on the other hand, well, yeah, it's probably a combo card. I guess I could see this going. Um, you can do it the same way you use Hermit. And uh, it's the same casting cost, too. Probably not a good thing. So, yeah, Oath of Druid's gone. I'm okay with Rofellos being gone. Basically, you could Oath into a Laboratory Maniac. Your opponent has one turn to answer it, and then you Oath away the rest of your deck and win. Seems pretty dumb. Rofellos being gone is perfect. Again, this is the band as a commander problem. Um, Priest of Titania often produces more mana, but it doesn't do it 100% of the time, where Ophelos does if he's in your command zone, and since they can't ban his commanders, gone. Strip Mine, this is ridiculous. Uh, I guess they wanted to make Blue stronger. I, I don't really follow this at all. The Banning Strip Mine makes aggro weaker and Blue decks stronger, because you cannot strip two Blue. So they can sit on two Blue and a Counterspell, and what are you going to do about that? Not much. Uh, you know, you, you have an expedition map. Uh, too bad. Uh, you're not getting through that counter spell unless you can go get Cavern of Souls and your threat is a creature. But still, not very, not very good choice there, I think. It also prevents you from locking out blue decks with Crucible. But you can walk, lock out everyone else with Crucible wasteland because wasteland was in ban so basically what that means is that the mono blue decks can strip mine everyone else to death with wastelands crucible combo but the blue decks can't be strip mine to death with strip mine crucible combo uh seems super super stupid to me but okay since he's divining top banned i guess they just don't like top online because it's slow and you can grief people or whatever i don't know i've they have a function where you can say right, right click and say uh you can say um always yield to opponents since he's divining tops at which point this card wouldn't grief you at all um i think i don't know maybe there's a way to do it maybe that's the problem but it seems kind of dumb to me um on the other hand I don't really care. The card used to be really, really good. Um, it used to be a card that in control you just slump down and feel really bad when they open with a top. Uh, but technology's gotten a lot better and uh, decks have gotten a lot tighter. I, I don't think Sensei's Divine Top has anywhere near the value that it used to have. Um, so honestly, I don't miss it that much. Fine. It's gone. Whatever. Sarah Ascendant um, is just ridiculous in the 30 life format. Unless, I guess, you're playing group games? I, I don't really know, but gone, and I don't mind at all. Uh, Survival of the Fittest, uh, honestly, I wasn't even using it when I could use it, and Brea can gain life pretty easily, but it just wasn't. It works in Aloro, and that's about it, but then Aloro, at the time, in the past, was running Humility, so we didn't even care about Sarah Ascendant. Uh, actually, and the funny thing is, I'll go back to Humility for a second, the ban on Humility really is just a ban on a Laurel without outright banning the card, because it's literally the only reason to play a Laurel. Like, you play a Laurel for Humility, because your commander does something in the command zone that you care about, and so you decide, well, I'm going to try to play a control deck and use, and the control card that I'll use as the focus of my deck will be Humility. And you just can't do that now, because it's gone. So there's that. Um, the Abyss, on the other hand, good, but nowhere near the same. Uh, it's the, you would have to combine the Abyss with a couple of other cards in order to stop everything that Humility stops. And maybe that's their problem with it, but, I mean, there's a lot of cards that when, I mean, at 4 mana, why don't you just ban Jace the Mind, uh, 
sense uh, sculptor because that that card's going to win the game just as easily or more easily and is certainly more common and in a better color, whatever. Uh, so survival of the fittest ban. It's just a straight up combo card. It's ridiculous. It's it's vampiric tutor on a stick. Yeah, that thing's got to go. Actually, demonic tutor. Once you get it running, you lose a card initially, and after that, every creature is a demonic tutor. Pretty ridiculous. Uh, for half the cost. Sylvan Library, thank goodness this card's gone. What a ridiculous card to have to deal with in a format. It's The problem with this card is multiple problems. It's it's a 30 life format already is a, has a problem with cards like this. I'm actually shocked that Necro's not on this list, but maybe it's the casting cost of Necro holding it back. But Sylvan Library is splashable by every deck running green, 100%. Almost any game in which a Sylvan hits on turn two, the game's already lost for the opponent if they don't have something remark. You know, if they're not playing like, I don't know, turn to say Leovold or something remarkable to keep pace with it or disenchant it, which is not always going to happen, uh, the Sylvan can just win the game too easily. It's too splashable. Uh, the life doesn't matter anywhere near as much. And um, on top of all those things, the deck. A lot of times, um, the thing about a Necropotence is that you can kind of, or like say a Dark Confidant, who's like more like a comparable card to Sylvan Library. When you look at a Dark Confidant, you can actually kill somebody with a Confidant a lot of times, either because they have to block with a Confidant in order to get rid of it because their life's getting too low, or um, in the case of, say, um, Confidant, they, uh, they take they take too much uncontrolled damage. Or with Necro, for example, their deck might have a lot of removal. What in the world? Their deck might have a lot of removal, but not a lot of blockers. That's a more typical thing you'd see in a Necro deck. But in Sylvan, it's in green, and so they're going to have a lot of blockers. And so it's hard to pressure their life total. And green also has the best life gain in the format. So there's a lot of things wrong with Sylvan. I, I suppose black has good life gain if you're really dedicated to black, but Otherwise, not so much. But anyway, there's a lot of things wrong with it, and I'm glad to see it go. Uh, yeah, again, still surprised about Necro. Not complaining, though. I am going to use it till I can. This card, I have no idea why it's banned. Uh, yeah, sure. In multiplayer, it griefs three people, but in 1v1, like, what does this card actually do? Uh, I'm really not sure that it uh, should be banned. I mean, if it's a price issue, I guess, but Mishra's Workshop's not banned, and that's similar price, I think. So, yeah, it doesn't really... I mean, you know, Imperial Seal's not banned, so... And and also, we're talking online here. I, I just don't... This doesn't make sense to me at all. Um, I mean, who actually cares about this card? They're probably not the deck you're worried about anyway, most of the time. I don't think it would go on Brea, and also, its best buddy, Winter Orb, is banned, which I'll get back to in a second. Time Vault banned, fine. Stupid degenerate combo card has no business being in the format. For sure. Time Walk, it's just power nine, fine. Tinker, much, much more powerful than Time Walk and Time Walk's ban, so yeah. T Academy, this is another one that they could potentially take off the ban list. Uh, it probably sounds crazy to you, but frankly, like, let's. Oh, how many artifacts are you going to pack in your deck that suck in order to run this? So, first of all, you're just going to pack all the good artifacts in your deck and not the bad ones, most likely. In which case, you're already doing that. In which case, Talarian Academy, if you look at, I'll show you the deck I'm running in a second. Uh, one in five cards I have are artifacts. So Talarian Academy will average out producing one mana in any opening hand, right? So one in five cards is an artifact. So I should have an artifact and a Talarian Academy in an opening hand if I open with an Academy, which means... It's just a worse, it's an island you can wasteland until I can find a way to get it going. And I don't mind seeing it banned at all, except where the heck is Sarah's Sanctum and Gaia's Cradle? Those cards are pretty degenerate too. I mean, if, if we're worried about how a card powers up over time, let's get rid of those cards as well. I think this card's very like, you know, you because of the potential to draw something like uh, Soul Ring and Crypt, making good hands better, Maybe that's the reason here. But I actually think they ought to try it and see how often that's really a big deal. Because on the other hand, let's say I'm playing Academy and you're playing first turn Soul Ring or something, and I do get a draw like, say, I get 
gosh, I mean, I, I don't even know. What, what what could I get? Like uh, Mox Diamond, Mox Opal, Tolarian Academy, and it taps for two now, I guess? Like I've dumped most of my hand. Like I, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't think the card's as bad as they think it is. It's only crazy sometimes. And if that's the argument, then let's get rid of Guy's Cradle, please. No? Okay. Bias. Winter Orb, this card depresses me to no end. The Brea deck was entirely built around this card. Like, the whole deck is designed to do almost one thing exclusively, which is which is hold the line, get Winter Orb on the table, and protect the card. Like, that's what it does. That's the entire focus of the deck. So I'm super bummed about this. Like, they banned... Uh, and, and, and by the way, Zer the Enchanter, yeah, absolutely, especially. They could unban this if they were to ban Necro, but you cannot have both in the same format. So if they're going to leave Necro, they got to kill Zer the Enchanter. So Winter War ban, they, they, if you look at what's banned here, they, they just mind twist, uh, Winter Orb, Strip Mine Recursion potentially, um, and Humility. So those four cards right there that were added to the ban list, Let's not even talk about moat and stuff, which is just, which is just like a big fu to control for no reason at all. But let's just look at the other four cards. Um, those cards are anti-combo cards. Like against the combo decks, you need to suppress their mana or their cards, and you do that with orb, strip mine, uh, necropotence, and my, uh, I mean sorry, mind twist, and um, and if you can't do any of those things, humility which might suppress their strategy, depending on what their strategy is. You know, so if it's based on, say, Laboratory Maniac, maybe you, you force them to find some other way to win, right? So I, I'm very disappointed about this. I'm extraordinarily disappointed, but of all the things that bother me, I think the one, the, the one that bothers me the most is Winter Orb. I mean, if I had to pick between the four cards, I would want the Orb back more than anything. But if they're not going to give us the Orb, they, they, they darn sh should have... Like, the banning of strip mine, I, I don't even understand this. This helps control. Uh, like, so, I, I don't know. It, it's only good for the control decks that are trying to... That have access to the, the more tutors and can try to beat other control decks by strip recursion on their basic land. So, I, I don't know why they would help mono blue. I think that's insane. And why they would weaken aggro. So, why does this weaken aggro? It's because you can get threats on the board and then you can go first turn jackal pup I go land and you go strip mine. I go land and you go wasteland, and I'm taking tons of damage. Which, you know, I am at 30, but suddenly my life total is looking pretty bad. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, that's it on the ban list. I'm not happy. I'm honestly like really unhappy with uh, some of the choices. I'm super disappointed about mind twist. If you're gonna bring in all the fast mana and the tutors, why the heck is in this in there for me to go get against storm? Um, I can live with the humility, even though I think it's kind of asinine. The moat thing is totally baffling, but whatever, nobody played it anyway. I mean, basically, the banning of humility is banning a Lauro, and I wasn't playing a Lauro, so I guess I can live with that. But then this other one, but the strip mine, winter orb, mind twist, man, that, that just kills me. So if anyone has any say, please petition for them to come back in the order of winter orb is the most important one mind twist is probably the second most important and strip mines the third maybe maybe it's winter orb strip mine twist it's hard to say but i think that's nuts anyway on to deck construction so the deck i'm playing is still brea i love playing brea and there are a lot of tools that uh, were attained for the deck there there are some things you can do that i tried in the first set and you'll see that I wasn't happy with, and so I ended up cutting. But for now, this is the build. There are also, also some projected changes as um, Battle Bond comes out online, and then the other thing I need is about 50 bucks for a, a foil to fairy, which I just, I don't have 50 bucks. But if I can win, now that there's actual prizes available, I might be able to win enough and then be able to fund uh, for the to fairy fund, which would be kind of nice. So um, why is the deck constructed the way it is? Uh, I actually ended up cutting a land. I went from, I took out strip mine and I'm just at 31 lands. They don't have a replacement. There's really nothing like the card. Unfortunately, uh, wasteland is obviously the closest thing, but that was always going to be in the deck. So yeah, we're at 31 lands. Um, the other thing that, uh, 
the other thing that wasn't in the deck at, at the, in the past were uh, Cruise and Dig, but I actually think that these cards do need to be in here because blue is so good. Uh, mono blue in particular, um, these cards allow you to do good things against mono blue. If they get Mana Drain, you're in big, big trouble, but um, they're also very cheap ways to um, win a counter war or lose a counter war and still make a, a, a play that is important. <laughs> like losing a counter war and then cruising or digging is still uh, a good turn most of the time. So they have to be in there against blue. They also work really well with the fake winter orb replacement Armageddon. The options are Armageddon, Rising Waters is another option. And then, of course, there are some other options as well, but they get a little bit worse after that. So Armageddon was the one that I selected, and the reason that I chose it was a couple of different things. First of all, um, it actually works with Cruise and Dig, so you can Armageddon, you could potentially Armageddon play a land cast Cruise, for example. So there's that. You want to be a little cautious, because if you can get Crucible of Worlds going, uh, you might want to leave a land in your graveyard to recur, but if you have the choice between leaving a land and not and not casting Cruise versus casting a cruise that you know will resolve then take the cruise uh the other reason is specifically when our uh, crucible of worlds armageddon works with that and crucible of worlds loses a lot of value without strip mine it's okay with wasteland but again it's only good against it's not going to help you against mono blue which is one of the bigger problem decks um but uh at least at least uh, you're you're running a little additional synergy to make it to kind of make the card a little bit stronger again. Um, another card that came out was Whir of Invention. Whir of Invention is a Winter Orb card. Uh, yes, it can go get Soul Ring and it can go get um, Crypt, and those are those are fine things to get. But it's a little bit of work to get Triple Blue early in the game sometimes. However, that card. In a deck with Winter Orb, when it can go get Winter Orb or tap the Winter Orb to untap all of your mana, it's indispensable. So it's 100% run it with Winter Orb. Without it, it's a questionable choice, yay or nay. And I thought I'd rather just dig through time rather than rather than uh, uh, play the uh, instant speed artifact searcher when I don't really have an artifact that is going to win the game against anyone except for maybe... The mirror match, which the Crucible could do, um, or creatures, Vettelkin Shackles, Jitte. I mean, worrying for a sword is all right, but not anywhere. It's It has nowhere near the impact. A lot of times when you would go get Winter Orb was because the opponent had six or seven cards in hand, made a big play that they forced through to draw up so they can kill you on the next turn, but you're able to go get Orb and buy time. And uh, Sword of Feast of Famine doesn't help in situations like that because, you know, you knock the worst card out of their hand, they kill you with the rest of them. So uh, that's just how it is. Um, what other changes are in here? I don't think too many other things. Um, there is no scroll rack. There's just no time. The format's way too tight for that to be dinking around with that. There is still a land tax in Three Islands simply because, you first of all, you need a couple of basic lands for things like Path to Exile and Ghost Quarter already so you're going to want to run probably two you also need enough islands for Vettelkin shackles at which point you might as well just throw the third and run the single land tax now you've got lamb tax armageddon which is yet another reason to run armageddon for example over rising waters at least to my mind uh, also land tax mox diamond is nice and finally um and finally uh it's just really really good against other blue decks so um just because of the armageddon i think i i think there's no way that you put Armageddon in a deck and you don't put land tax in a deck. Like, that's kind of ridiculous. Now, on the other hand, Scroll Rack, it's a great combo, and I'd love to combo it. Uh, of course, it's completely broken, like win the game stuff. But um, the the other search for artifact card is out, uh, so it's a little less likely to put that together. And you just, I don't think you can afford a card that doesn't really, it may not do enough. I, I don't know if Scorite could come back, but right now I'm hesitant to run it because uh, you just want every draw to be as meaningful as possible. And it might not have enough impact to uh, to justify the, the slot that it's in. Um, I guess we'll see. The thing is, most of the time what you're tutoring for is not to put together a tax rack combo. You're mostly, if you have, 
you know, the ability to enlighten tutor, for example, you're mostly going to go get this card. And while this card's in, I think scroll rack's probably out because you just consistently want to go get necro. Like that's the name of the game almost always. Uh, and so, yeah, I just, I don't know. It's, it's just, it's a two card combo. That's not as powerful as a one card combo. So why bother? Uh, it's the same reason cards like future sight and stuff aren't in here. Now there is card drawing in here, of course. Um, but they're card drawing, it's card drawing that has, you know, other things going for it. For example, Jace, obviously just an all-arounder and so on and so forth. Still like the Tezret in here, even though we can't go get the Wiener Orb, because being able to get a Jitte, a Soul Ring, you know, Mana Crypt, uh, Crucible, Sword of Feast and Fam, and there's still plenty of great targets, so we'll leave that guy alone. Um, and that's about it for the changes. So I think... I think I'm actually going to do a double video. No, I think I will run through games. This will be a really long video if I do that. Should I do that? No, I'm going to break it into two. Sorry, I, I was kind of debating this. I didn't realize how long I'd be talking. Um, yeah, oh, and when I said Sensei's Divining Top earlier, kind of replaced by new tech for Brea, that tech is Skull Clamp. So um, you could make an argument for Scroll Rack as a fake Sensei's Divining Top to control the top of your deck so you take less damage with Dark Confidant. And that is a very reasonable argument and also makes it a little bit better. Confidant's a little scarier when you run Cruise and Dig, for example. But I don't think that's enough reason to play Scroll Rack per se. Um, so unless we see evidence that we really just need a Scroll Rack, uh, I say nah. Now, uh, as far as the next set goes, well, two things. First of all, Teferi. Teferi should be in this deck probably. It's a little difficult to say where. If the deck had Winter Orb, I would have to get a Teferi because the fact that it untaps lands just makes it too good. It's already really, really good, but it's it would just be adding even more synergy to a deck that was you know crafted to be built around the card that they banned. Um, so I don't know... It, it loses a smidgen of value when you take Winter Orb out. Um, Treachery does for that reason as well, although Treachery can just be super gross and probably should stay. So I don't know um, for sure where Teferi will fit into the deck, um, but as far as what's in Battle Bond, so that's going to have to kind of be something to think about before, you know, as I'm working towards getting the uh, card. My first hunch is actually something strange, but it actually is that Copy Artifact could actually be the Teferi. And the reason is that um, I'm actually not seeing a lot of opponents running too many artifacts. I'm seeing a lot of Kestex, and I'm seeing a lot of Mass Artifact Kill, in which case Copy Artifact's losing tons of value. The card's in there because it's an answer to a turn one Soul Ring, but... Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's not necessary. There, there, maybe there's something else too. I'm not saying that is the card, but I'm saying you know that's one of the ones I'd be I'd be considering uh, to make that swap out. Meanwhile, from Battle Bond, there's a card. It's called Spellseeker. It's a three mana human for a one one. Uh, so it's very similar to a Trinket Mage, except it's a one one instead of a two two. It's the same thing. Human Wizard, same casting cost and everything. But it goes in. It fetches a instant that costs two or less, I believe. Uh, it's 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 a merchant scroll. I think it gets blue instance, but it might get all of them. If it gets all of them, it's a hundred percent goes in here because it's super flexible, getting disenchanter swords. But if it just gets blue, it still goes in here. And I think the card it replaces might actually be worn power stone. Of all the ramp cards, it is the weakest one. The only argument, the primary argument for power stone, is uh, well, there's a couple of them. Um, first of all, workshop, crypt, and vault make Power Stone a lot better because if you open with any of these three cards plus this guy, you get to go turn one Power Stone and that's a monster ramp that your opponent is going to have a real tough time keeping up with. And so um, this, or there is also the way where you can do it with a combination of two cards, which is either Ancient Tomb and a Mox or Ancient Tomb and a Soul Ring. So there's even more ways that you could potentially pull off a turn one Power Stone, which is really, really good. Um, on the other hand, uh, being able to go get a Mana Drain, particularly with the, with the Spell Seeker, makes him a super strong threat because you, you tap out for Mana Drain, you tap out to go fetch yourself a Mana Drain, 
And then once you untap with mana drain in your hand, it's kind of like having a, a mana ramp spell, but it's a much better mana ramp spell than Horn Power Stone. And so, um, and so it's kind of taking the slot, the three slot, and doing the same thing, but it has more flexibility, more potential for you, uh, because you can get Mystical Tutor or Brainstorm or something like that, uh, Impulse or whatever. Um, but mainly, it's it's going to be in there to go get mana drain, which is a huge thing. You know, it the more what you want to do is play Mana Drain in every game that you possibly can. Um, mono Blue, if it loses Mana Drain, doesn't lose that much because it, the, the deck tends to be a lot of redundant garbage, low-cost stuff, and it really has nothing to do with it. This deck, on the other hand, is designed to be a big mana deck with tutoring to do something with that mana, so Mana Drain has a ton more value here. It's mu it's much more painful for this deck to lose Mana Drain than it is for Mono Blue to lose it, also because Mono Blue has redundant two-drop counters and this deck doesn't. Um, so, uh, you know, it's very counter-light. So, um, another way to fetch Mana Drain is huge. The other, the other card you can get is with, like, you could use it to fetch Muddle the Mixture and then Muddle into a Demonic Tutor, so a very long, slow tutor effect, but if you need it, you need it. Uh, I'm not sure if Rift should be in here. I don't think it should be, even despite all the mana, just because a lot of games are not going to be about your opponent's permanence, honestly. Like, they're going to be about combo um, or other things, or, or they're going to be uh, attacking your mana base, and Rift is so weak when you can't play the uh, kick cost, but also Rift... Unless you can Armageddon right away, you know, Rift doesn't do that much. You'd like to Rift into an Amnesia or an Armageddon or a Winter Orb, and in the past, Rift was pretty good because you could Rift into a Winter Orb pretty reliably, but now, not so much. Um, with the with the rip, with the Orb gone, which was a much more tutorable card than Armageddon is, um, I'm not sure that Rift belongs either. Um a case may be made that we should run Rising Waters because of Enlightened Tutor. Uh, if you look at it, so in the past, when we have Winter Orb, so imagine this is Winter Orb. If this is Winter Orb, you can Enlighten Tutor for it, but you can also Mystical Tutor for it because you can Mystical Tutor for another card that will go get it. And for example, uh, you know, we still have Fabricate here just because it goes and gets Soul Ring, but also uh, the other one, the one that taps. Uh, the instant speed card that I said combos with it. Um, man, I can't I hate when I draw a blank like this. Word of Invention. So you could Mystical for Word to go get Orb. You could Mystical for a Dark Demonic Tutor. You could Mystical for Muddle to go get Orb. So you could Mystical for an Orb is the point I'm making and Enlightened Tutor for it. Now, as far as Armageddon goes, you can Mystical for it, but you can't Enlightened Tutor for it. So maybe the card should be Rising Waters just because you can, again, kind of do both. Uh, but maybe not because Armageddon's a lot better... Uh, if your opponent has tons of mana and they're going to try to break your back, you can you can run out in Armageddon, knowing that knowing that you can counter you can fight a counter work you you can do it against somebody untapped, and if you can push it through, then you you get the effect you need. Whereas if they don't tap out, then Rising Waters you know not so good. And um, the fact that you can't fetch it with Tezzeret and you can't fetch it with Whirr, which we don't have anymore, you can't fetch it with Fabricate, you can't muddle for it. Like, Orb was just the card this deck was built around, and I'm not sure Rising Waters cuts it. So that's all the kind of changes and the justifications for them. Uh, a card like Amnesia could be in here, but again, I'm not sure that it's good enough because against decks that attack your mana, it's a bad, it's a bad feeling to hold it. Maybe it will be when we have the extra spell uh, dork to go get Mana Drain because in the original version of the deck, the reason Mana Drain Amnesia worked as a replacement for Mind Twist after Mind Twist was banned is that you had four Mana Drains. So you you would just go, oh, opening hand Mana Drain and in Amnesia, land, land, Mana Drain your three drop, land, Amnesia you, I win. So... Uh, that's pretty much it. I do think I'm going to break this into two videos. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this rapid discussion. And I look forward to hearing your comments, questions, concerns. And we will uh, we will move right into... I'll start. I'll go ahead and get that other... The gameplay video up. And you can check that out next. And tell me what you think. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.